Hello and welcome back to Amateur Radio DMR Programming. I'm Mike K0NGA and this is the third video in the series for end-to-end uh, -end hotspot setup. So we've determined our frequency, we've programmed a radio, and now we want to actually set up our hotspot. In this case, uh, the OpenSpot 2. OpenSpot 2 is fantastic because it is a Wi-Fi uh, device, so it has a Wi-Fi chip in it that can connect to Wi-Fi networks. But to get it set up, it actually sets itself as an access point. And uh, using that, we can get access to it to set it up in its initial configuration on a Wi-Fi network. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, there's some other videos on YouTube about how to do this. Most of those videos show you how to do that using a Android device. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually show you how to do this on a laptop. Now, my laptop is uh, unique because it's my work laptop, so I have the Cisco... Uh, VPN software on it, uh, but the, uh, it'll work in a similar way, and I'll show you that here in a moment. So the first thing we need to do in order to configure our hotspot once it's plugged in, uh, it's in its uh, factory default setting, so nothing's been set up on it. Uh, for the open spot too, when you set that up and plug it in, it turns itself into an access point so that you can connect to it. Now in regular Windows, uh, without the, any connect software in it, you would go down here to the network thing. And connect to it. So here's your here's the open spot two access point. That's the way it shows up. But because I'm using uh, Cisco AnyConnect, I actually have to go to the Cisco AnyConnect section here, and then I have to select it from this list in order to connect to it. So I do that, and it connects, and it gets an IP address, and then I have to wait for a moment because it's going to try to automatically connect into my VPN, and I have to stop that from happening. Very good. Now, normally. When this, when you're connected to the access point on a Android device or whatnot, um, it'll automatically get redirected to a login screen. That doesn't happen, or doesn't happen for me anyway, here on my laptop. So what you have to do is in your browser, you type in. It's very simple. You type in that address manually. That address is very simple. As you can see here, it's http colon slash slash openspot two dot local. So if you're on a laptop and the screen doesn't automatically pop up for you, you can just go to this address and it works just fine. So that pops you in here to the OpenSpot 2 main initial configuration screen. And the first thing it's going to ask you for is, of course, what is your country of operation? I'm in the United States, so I just click Next. It's then going to, then going to search for Wi-Fi networks in your area. I'll do a quick scan and it'll give you a list. Now I'm using the Google Wi-Fi setup, so I actually have three separate access points on the same network in the environment, so that's why you're seeing this here. I choose the one with the lowest uh, DBM, negative 51 there, and hit connect. It's gonna ask you for your network key, which you type in, hit connect. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna reboot. At this point now, we've lost access to the device because it is now connecting to a different network. It no longer has an access point. And I'm watching the, the lights on my open spot. And yes, now it's blinking alternatively between green and yellow, meaning that it has uh, successfully connected to um, my home network. So now I've got to take my laptop and connect back to my home network. And again, normally you would do this here if, you were, if you're not using any kind of weird VPN software like I am. But since I'm using the VPN software, I'll pop back over here. And on my network, switch back to the same network in my environment. Now, since this network, again, has IP, has, uh, IP has, uh, connectivity into the Internet, it's going to you know, try to probably try to connect in, which I'll have to wait and make sure that that's not going to happen. Okay, excellent. So now I'm on the same network, the same Wi-Fi network as the open spot, and I need to get into the open spot. So the way that SharkRF wants you to do this is to use the sharkrf.link um, access uh, URL and so let's do that and by doing that you get this screen so what it's going to ask you for is the UID of your device so I need to go grab my device real quick bring that over to my computer and I look on that and it shows my UID now I don't know if showing you my UID is going to cause any security issues for me so I'll probably uh, gray this out later uh, before I publish so hopefully you'll see this grayed out and I'm going to put in my device ID
And that device ID will be an eight character uh, uh, string, which will be numbers and letters, and you hit connect. And when you do that, you'll get into the configuration screen for the next setup you're set up in your radio. Now, if that UID setup process doesn't work right away, wait a minute or two and try again. Uh, the information has to be updated in the Shark RF database before that works, and sometimes it can take a minute or two, or two for that to show up. So just give it a minute and try again if it doesn't work the first time. So now it's asking about me. This is the basic information just to get up online. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put in the information here. So we're going to do K0NGA. Uh, and then my DMR ID pops in automatically because it'll check the database for your ID. It will pull the, if you have multiple IDs, it'll pull the first ID. Uh, now, I don't use my straight ID personally for my hotspot. I add a couple of digits on so that um, it doesn't interfere with any of my radio traffic for any reason or whatnot. I don't have an NXDIN ID, so I'm not going to do that. Let's leave it at zero. I'm going to hit save. Now, it's going to ask me, please select the type of your radio. So I'm using a DMR radio because it does offer some kind of some some limited amount of cross band outside of D star. Uh, so now we're going to put on our frequency. Now we've already determined our frequency. We programmed our frequency into our radio. So that frequency is 446.2125, which is my local frequency here. So that's my frequency for my radio. Now it's going to select which network we want to con connect to. And I'm going to choose Brandmeister. And now it's going to ask me, okay, which Brandmeister server do I want to connect into? So I'm going to go oh, down here to USA. There we go. And you choose 3102. Um, there's my call sign. That's my information. I'm not going to link to any uh, talk groups here. Now, if I did this right, we should get uh, an announcement as I turn my radio on here and get it co connected to the right uh, channel. So that I can see, hear it uh, broadcast. Yep, oh, there's my radio. So now, when it connects, it should give out a broadcast and I should be able to hear it. So let's see if this works. Open spot, connect into Brandmeister 3102, link static, talk groups 3108 and 3135 and Three one zero eight zero four and three one zero eight one nine and three one zero eight four two and three one zero eight four four. So we got a successful test there as uh, the uh, open spot announced once it connected into the Brasmeister server. Now you may have noticed that it spewed off a bunch of uh, static talk groups. Your, one, your Apple Spot probably won't do that. Mine did that because I'm reusing the ID. I did a factory reset on it, and it was already set up and already had static talk groups assigned to it, so it picked those up when I connected back in. Uh, but yours won't spew out that much information. But we're now connected into the Brandmeister server. We're getting communication with the radio. So now uh, we are up and running and ready to broadcast out on Brandmeister. Now this is it for this particular part of the video. Uh, this video. The next video, I'll show you some, some other configuration steps you can do now that everything's up and running to customize your open spot and get things working the way that you want. So thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.